Now, one Democratic senator in particular who's always been a big backer of strong action on the climate and even of the Green New Deal is Ed Markey of Massachusetts. He introduced legislation to ban Russian oil imports only days before Biden did precisely that. Senator Markey joins me now. Thank you so much for coming back on the show, Senator. No, great to be with you again. With, Thank you. I want to start with President Biden's comments in Poland about ending dependence on Russian fossil fuels. It should be ending dependence on all fossil fuels, should it not? Yes, it should. Um, uh, our global addiction to fossil fuels is a catalyst for conflict. Uh, the Green New Deal is a pathway to peace. And that's the pathway that we now have to take. Uh, if we pass a comprehensive climate, clean energy bill for wind and solar, all electric vehicles, uh, battery storage technologies, uh, we can have a long-term pathway uh, which reduces and then eliminates our need for oil, but also lead the rest of the world on that same pathway. So, for example, when I was calling for a cutoff of Russian oil coming into the United States, um, that was 600,000 barrels of oil a day. Well, if we deploy just 16 million all-electric vehicles in the United States, we back out all Russian oil. If we deploy another 16 million all-electric vehicles, we back out all yes. Saudi yes. oil, et cetera, et cetera. It's within so, our so own power to innovate and deploy the technologies which will back us out of these countries, which we have become all too dependent upon. And on that note, you mentioned dependence on multiple countries. You mentioned Saudi oil. You have the Biden administration right now trying to replace the Russian oil uh, with administration officials traveling to Venezuela. You have the president considering a trip to Saudi Arabia to get them to produce more oil. Isn't that rather, I don't know, hypocritical to go from one autocratic human rights abusing oil producer to another? Well, it's a sad commentary on the state of affairs in our country, but the whole planet, that we are so dependent upon these countries for the oil which fuels our economies. I remember back in 2008 when George Bush went hat in hand to the Saudi prince uh, asking at $5 a, a gallon oil in the United States for them to produce another million barrels of oil a day. But the Saudi prince said to him, well, will you sell us nuclear power plants? Well, the one thing we don't need is uranium and plutonium in the hands of the Saudi government. So this is just history repeating itself. And once and for all, yeah. finally, yeah. let us deploy the, uh, the new technologies that back out our need for that imported oil. Um, we have it so, in so our power to do that. Otherwise, we will be compromising democracies because we are forced to deal with autocracies that control the fuel that drives the economy of the planet. Senator, your Spigot Act seeks to make a ban on Russian oil imports permanent, and it's just one part of your plan for 500 days to energy independence, you say. What briefly is that plan? And perhaps most importantly, can it get passed? Well, it essentially says, one, deploy the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, 265 million barrels. That, that's, um, that's 500 days of Russian imported oil. Uh, move to, um, uh, move to uh, 5 million heat pumps installed in our country and to put that plan in place as an emergency uh, plan uh, and to uh, deploy 5 million all-electric vehicles in our nation as well. We can do that with the tax breaks that we pass this year uh, because the auto industry is ready to sell them. We just have to help American consumers purchase them. And then we have so, a plan that backs out all of that Russian oil. We can get it all done in 500 days on a permanent basis. You mentioned American consumers. In the latest NBC News poll, an overwhelming number of Americans, 79 percent agree with the U.S. ban on Russian oil, even if it causes higher gas prices. At the same time, though, Senator, inflation, as you know better than me, is a very real concern. 68 percent of Americans want Biden to make reducing inflation and the cost of living his top priority. How hard is it, realistically, to tackle our dependence on oil when gas prices are such a big part of our politics and your own party's re-election chances come November? Well, without question, the one consumer product that each American knows uh, is the price of gasoline. 
Uh, and it becomes a metaphor for the economy, which is why it's imperative that we announce a Green New Deal agenda, that we announce a, a plan to dramatically reduce our dependence upon oil in all of its forms. We put 70 percent of the oil that we consume in our country into gasoline tanks. Uh, that's what Americans know. And so as they get tipped upside down at the gasoline pump week after week, uh, they obviously and understandably get angry. Well, we've got a solution and we're going to fight for it uh, because we not only know that we can save the planet from climate change, but we can also save the consumer from being held uh, hostage by these uh, international uh, oil cartels, which, by the way, also include ExxonMobil, Chevron, and American oil companies. Once and for all, let's just end it. That's the message which I'm yes. working with, and that's the message which Joe Biden is is uh, making very clear has to be the agenda for our country now in the short run, oh. but in the long term as well. I wish members of your party would talk more about the price gouging by oil companies when it comes to higher prices. Uh, Senator, if there's something that's going to save your party come the midterms, uh, it will be a higher turnout based on the fact that Joe Biden is going to do something historic and put the first black woman on the Supreme Court, Ketanji Brown Jackson. Um, her hearings on Monday, the Senate Judiciary Committee will vote uh, on Judge Jackson's nomination to the court. And once it goes to the full Senate, there will be one Republican we now know on board, uh, Maine's Susan Collins who says she will vote for Judge Jackson. But her Republican colleagues on the Senate Judiciary Committee, I think we can all agree, behaved outrageously during Judge Jackson's confirmation hearings last week. And I wonder, why didn't Democratic senators, with the exception of Cory Booker, do more to defend her from Republican attacks? You see those headlines. People were very upset that Democrats didn't do more to call out the racism and misogyny from Republicans as Judge Jackson had to just sit there and listen to it. Well, um, first of all, uh, Judge Jackson was brilliant. She was wise. Um, she absolutely dominated those hearings. Uh, she is not only uh, a black woman, but she's also going to be the first, um, the first public defender that we've had yes. on the Supreme Court as well. That's a special moment in history. And there's no question uh, that much of the questioning was tinged with racism and sexism. Uh, and I think that the response that we've heard from the American people uh, has led to a wellspring of support uh, for her nomination to the Supreme Court. She's become, like Thurgood Marshall, uh, somebody who can be a big difference maker for the long term just by the very fact that she is sitting there. So my hope is that Susan Collins is going to be followed by other Republicans as well who realize that what happened in those hearings uh, uh, cannot be allowed to stand as representative of what the Republican Party in our country today stands for. There's been talk of reviving some version of the Build Back Better bill. Progressives are trying to get childcare back into that bill. But there's always been the Joe Manchin factor. He helped kill Build Back Better. He's now come out against Joe Biden's billionaire's minimum income tax, which was revealed in the budget just this week. Joe Manchin said yesterday, no. And I know the president once said in a 50-50 Senate, you have 50 presidents. But isn't it really just one? And that one is President Joe Manchin. And he seems to have more power and influence these days than President Joe Biden. Well, we have to work, obviously, with Senator Manchin. Uh, we have to get to 50 votes so that uh, the vice president uh, can break the tie. And, uh, and he's said good things about an energy package. We have to work with him. He said good things about prescription drugs. We have to work with him. We have to have a package, however, that gets 50 votes. And so that's going to be imperative for the Democrats to work together because we will have no Republican votes but I'm still hopeful uh, that we can have an historic package that deals with the climate crisis, deals with the prescription drug crisis in our country, and anything else that can get 50 votes. And negotiating with Senator Manchin is going to be key, uh, along with President Biden, to get to that moment where Vice President Senator Kamala Harris cast that vote that has a historic package which is passing. Senator, you and I both agree the threat from climate change is existential. It's a very serious issue. So let me ask you a very blunt question. A lot of people in America, when they're polled, they say Washington, D.C. is a corrupt place and the Senate is a dysfunctional institution. And when you look at the fact that Joe Manchin is a man who's made millions from a family coal business and now he chairs a key energy committee 
and decides what stuff gets into bills to protect the climate, people would say, yeah, that is dysfunctional, that is corrupt. What would you say to the American voter? Here's what I would say. I would say that the planet is running a fever and there are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to engage in the preventative care uh, that avoids the worst, most catastrophic consequences from uh, climate change. Uh, and that we're gonna work with Senator Manchin in order to get the 50th vote, in order to pass the legislation. I, I understand that, that point. I'm asking about the fact that how is it possible solar. someone, I, I understand, Senator, I'm asking about the fact that this is a guy who's made money out of coal, and now he's sitting as chair of an energy committee in the Senate deciding on how we save our planet. How is that right? Well, ultimately, um, he says that he wants to work to, um, to find a comprehensive energy and climate package. And so we will do that. And, uh, and out of it will come, uh, ultimately, the package, uh, which will give hope to future generations that we did respond to this crisis. That's what I'm working towards. That's what President Biden is working towards. And that's what we have to do in partnership with Senator Manchin. And I'm going to use every single day until we have that signing ceremony uh, in the Rose Garden to accomplish that goal. I hope you do. I hope you can. Senator Markey, an important conversation. Appreciate you taking time out to join us on the show tonight. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.